won't be long. Better back them up, boy. Father, we just praise you. Father, thank you for the energy that you gave us, that you flooded us with, Father, that um, we just had fun tonight, Father, in your presence. Father, we'll just continue to to have fun in your word. Thank you, Father, for the seeds that you will plant. And we expect a harvest out of the seeds that are planted tonight. Thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. And be with those that couldn't be with us here tonight. Father, we're missing several, so we just ask for you to watch over them, and um, we'll see them on Sunday. Father, we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. We are going to talk about living water. The song that we sang earlier about living water. Stirring up deep, deep wells. Stirring up deep, deep water some reason. Ah, there we go. Okay. I will get it figured out in a minute, y'all. Give me a minute. Okay, is that better? Okay, there we go. Okay, turn to John 4. Go to John 4. We are going to be reading about the woman at the well. We're going to look at it from a little different point of view than I've ever been taught. Um... John 4, starting in verse... Oh, let's just start in verse 1. Now I'm going to read all of it, and then we're going to talk about it. Because this is talking about living water. But I want to get our scripture, get the life word in us. Are you there? John 4, verse 1. I'll give you a second because I'm going to read. Sometimes I read fast. If I read fast, holler at me. I'll, tr- I'll try not to read fast. I tend to do that. Are we ready? Verse 1 says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, verse 2, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, verse 3, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. Now remember, the Jews and the Samaritans did not like each other. They they didn't talk, and so I, I bet she's going, Ooh! The Jew is talking to me. Continue. Verse 8. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Verse 10 says, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir... You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in, will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And I'm sure the woman's kind of looking at him like, what? The woman said to him in verse 15, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. So she's thinking in the physical aspects here. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. Is that you you spoke truly? In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. 
We know that what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship. The Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship. Verse 24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So what I want to talk to you about is this life-giving water that Jesus was talking to her about. Now, how many of you go to a restaurant and you're the bottomless pit on refills? I know when we go to, um, when we go to uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, Trista just drinks and drinks and drinks. And she's constantly going, I need water. And it'll be sitting there and she's like, Daddy, shake my glass. I need a drink. And so the waitress continuously comes by and fills her glass over and over and over. But she never seems to get her thirst quenched. And then she says, oh, hold on, i got to go to the bathroom. So she goes to the bathroom and she comes back and she's just like, I'm full. I'm done. I can't drink anymore. I'm going to pop even though I went to the restroom. Now, here's the thing. No matter how many refills that you get at a restaurant, how many times Trista drank at Buffalo Wild Wings? The next day, she's going to be thirsty again. And I can guarantee you the next time we go to Buffalo Wild Wings, even though she has probably drank, what do you normally drink, three or four glasses of water at least? Two glasses. Sometimes you drink more than that. Even though she's drank that much, in 10 days, if we go back, she's going to be thirsty again. So it doesn't matter how much water we drink or Dr. Pepper or Sprite or 7-Up, it doesn't matter. We're still going to be thirsty. The Bible talks to us about an appetite we have that's similar to this. He calls it our sinful nature. There's a part of us that simply has an appetite for sin. No matter how often we give in and feed our sinful nature, it's never satisfied. So what Jesus is telling her when he's talking to her about the living water, and, she's, and he says, go get your husband. She has tried to fulfill something in herself that she's lacking, and she's continuing to sin. Not necessarily, I mean, talking about the men, that's one thing, but she's missing something. She's lacking something. She's desiring something in her life, and she's seeking out man after man after man trying to fulfill something. And Jesus comes to her and he says, I have something for you that will fill you up and you will never thirst again. It's not this kind of water. It's the Holy Spirit. It's salvation. It's the water that never runs dry. And so sometimes when we start dabbling in things, you know, we get mad at our brother, we get mad at our sister, and it seems like a daily thing, we need to fill ourselves up with the Word and get, the, get whatever that is that we're lacking quenched. I find myself when I'm staying in a fizz about something, staying all worked up about something, that I haven't been spending time getting fed and filled up and getting my thirst quenched with the Word. And so when we, we spend time with God, we get those thirst quenched so we don't continue to sin and we're not seeking out sin because you know what? That thirst will never be quenched. When we're, when we're, when we're walking away from God, we will continue to seek something we, that we can't have. Now, when you spend time with God and you spend time in the Holy Spirit and praying and filling yourself up in the, in the Holy Spirit, we had prayer time before, and I caught a lot of you kiddos not really speaking out in your tongue in your prayer language, pray, fill yourselves up, stir yourselves up in that deep, deep water so that we can do mighty things for God. Look at John 7. Thirty-seven and thirty-eight. Verse 37 says, All that the Father, Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. We want to be doing the will of the Father, and when we're staying in fed and, and filled up with his water, 
then his water's going to come out. But when, when, we're, when we're not staying filled up, the world starts coming out. So we have to keep our thirst quenched with, with the Father's word. We don't... Okay, the, this river of living water will never run dry when we stay filled up. I need four. Um, who's not afraid for a balloon to pop over your head? You're not afraid for a balloon to pop over your head. I'm going to do it right over here so that... Okay, let's see. Um, Briley, you're not afraid? I'm going to use fire and a balloon. Are you afraid? Well, come on, sit in a chair. <laughs> Sorry, Lori. <laughs> It's going to pop. Is it going to scare her? Okay. You ready? Think it's gonna pop? Be still. I tried this at home and it didn't matter how long I heated it, it did not pop. The water will keep it from popping on you. Thank you. Everybody give her a hand. Good job. Now, the water balloon makes the balloon act differently. It changes the way the balloon responds to heat. When, we empty the, when the empty balloon behaves the way it does, it's because the properties that make up what it's full of is nothing. The one that popped is full of nothing but air. Just a lot of hot air from me. And it succumbed to pressure. Put a little heat on it and it popped. But when it's filled up with living water, you put a little pressure on it, it's not going to pop. So when we stay filled up with the living water of God, we can get a lot of pressure put on us, but we're never going to pop. Because it doesn't matter what you do. When you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, and you, you have the Word of God inside of you, there's no pressures that can pop you. When we stay filled up with God, His Word, and the living water, we can't be busted and we won't run dry. We don't want to just scratch the surface in the water, but we want to jump in the river. We want to jump in and go plumb up to the top of our heads and get just overcome with water. How many of you like to swim in the water in, the, in this pool and like to go underwater? That's what we want to do. Let's go ahead and play the deep, deep water. And when you're singing the deep, deep water and you're stirring it up, I want you thinking about stirring up the Holy Spirit inside of you. And we talk to him daily, minute by minute. It's a continuous conversation that we have with the Father. You don't have to stop and pray. You have to just continue in your day and say, Lord, which way do you want me to go? What do you want me to do today? Wake up every morning and say, all right, Lord, what are we going to do today? And then stop and listen for his answer. And we've talked about how you hear God's voice, okay? So you've got to stop and wait. So many times we say, all right, Lord, I'm filled up. Let's go, and off we go. We ask him what he wants us to do, and we leave. And we don't wait for that answer. 
But he's got a path for each one of us every single day. I know for me, it's, Lord, do you want me to go straight or turn right going home? Do you want me to go on the loop or do you want me to go through town? Because I found that when I don't listen to him when he tells me what to do, I've had fender benders. It's that he, 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 he loves us that much. And that living water is as much for us in our daily living as it is that he wants us to give it to everyone else. You know, we talked about plowing the fields. We talked about being a farmer for ourselves. But now we've got to move out into the next step. We got ourselves ready. So we got to have that brave. We got to have, we got to have that where we're not popping under pressure. Because, you know, we're, the world we live in can be pretty ugly. There's some pretty serious stuff going on over in the Middle East. Praise God it's not here. But we, 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 need to be, we need to be praying. We need to be staying stirred up and keeping that living water in us. Father, we glorify you and we thank you for the living water that you have put deep inside of us. That out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water that out of our mouths will flow your word, life-giving word, into everybody that we come in contact with. When we're in Brahms, when we're in Taco Bueno, when we're in Walmart, somebody that we come in contact with every single day needs that life-giving water to flow out of us into them. So, Father, we stay built up and we stay stirred up and we stir up those deep, deep wells so that we can pour that living water into them and that we're ready in season and out of season that we are like this balloon with water that we will not pop when put under pressure. We won't let fear. We won't let doubt. We won't let uncertainty come in because we've got what they need and it's your word. Father, we praise you. Thank you for Sunday's service, Father. Thank you that the, the word that you have for us is going to, to continue to grow that life-giving water in us. Father, we just, we're ready for the pep rally on Sunday to get ready for the week. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. As you've watched today, you've had the opportunity to hear the word preached. And as you apply that word, you'll get victory in your life. But it has to start someplace. It has to start first with a commitment to Jesus Christ as making him your Savior and then making him the Lord of your life. Paul said this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, the word of faith that Paul preached is found in the next verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with a heart one believes unto righteousness. So it goes like this. All you have to do is actually say, Jesus is my Savior and he is my Lord. So I'm going to invite you to say this with me this morning. Uh, and if you want to bow your head, you can bow your head. The Bible says that pray watching. And so it's okay to keep your eyes open and, and watch. But let's say this together. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I confess those sins today. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of those sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And I commit today that I will make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for salvation today. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that today for the first time, no matter what time of the day or night it is, uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now from this day on, make Him the Lord of your life. And as you make Him the Lord of your life, you will find out what God can do in you and through you. Also, if you've watched this broadcast, we want you to know that you can become a partner with this ministry. As you become a partner with this ministry, some of the things that you've seen throughout this uh, 
presentation, uh, the buck outs and, and things like that, then you become a part of that kind of ministry. And there's many people that come to know Jesus. We have offices in Nigeria and Togo, have four churches in Nigeria, one in, in Togo, and uh, we want you to know that you become a part of each and everything that this ministry does when you become a partner. You can see the information right there on your screen so that you're able to become a covenant partner with us. And as you do, we want you to know that we pray over each and every one of your offerings so that God will multiply it back to your hands according to his word. His word says in Luke 6, 38, that he gives back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to make room for more. The New Living Translation says whatever measure you use in giving large or small, it'll be used to measure what is given back to you. So we want you to know that God loves you He'll take care of you, and he'll multiply the seed that you sow in this ground with this ministry. Remember that Jesus is Lord, and Jesus loves you, and so do we.